Hi, I'm Three Gnomes, and I'm currently working on a psychological horror 3D platformer. So far, I have several levels made. I also made a very basic character controller for Toby in one of the last videos, Toby being the main character, a little gingerbread man. However, it didn't have any animations. I also set up a very basic health system and a health bar to go with it, as well as creating a very simple little enemy, Tilly the Turnip, so that you have something to interact with. The first thing I decided to fix was something that someone had pointed out to me, which was that the skybox was backwards, with the sun being on the opposite side of the direction that the light was coming from. So I flipped this, and voila, suddenly the sunlight was actually coming from the sun. Looked a lot better. Next, I added one of the little gold coins that I had made spin in one of the last videos to the scene. However, currently it doesn't actually do anything. There's no script to let you collect it. So I would come back to that. First, I wanted to make it so that when you collided with Tilly the Turnip, she would play the hit animation to make it feel like you actually collided with her. And honestly, in terms of how the game feels, that actually added a lot. While I wasn't ready to tackle any sort of actual enemy AI, I did want to make her feel a little more alive. So what I did simply was just make it so that she would constantly try and spin to follow you. I also made the speed that she rotates a little slower than the speed that the player moves to make it feel like she was kind of sluggish and kind of just curiously trying to see where you're going. Next I wanted to make it so that the out of bounds area in the level, such as the milk at the bottom of this fridge world, would be an instant kill if you collided with it so that you wouldn't jump off the level and try and just go exploring. I also used the same system of dealing damage to the player to make it so that other objects in the world could also hurt you if you touch them, such as falling into a blacksmith forge. Obviously, that should hurt you, and now it could. Next, I wanted to make the coin actually collectible. In Playmaker, I made the first state a wait-to-be-collected state. I attached a collider to the coins so that if you got close to it, it would activate, and it would send to the next state, which was collected. When it was sent to the collected state, I made it so that the coin would actually disappear, so that it was actually collected. I gave that a test in the game engine, and it disappeared, meaning I had done everything correct so far. I also made it so that in the collected state, it would raise the global variable, coins collected, by 1. You start with the variable coins collected at zero, and then after you go through the object, it raises it to one. I duplicated the coins around to make sure that when you went through them, they would continuously add one to the coin count. And thankfully, as I went through one by one, it continued to raise the number. To make it feel better to pick up, I also added a sound effect, which was essentially just me walking in the kitchen and dropping a coin next to a mic. However, when you go through the coin and it makes a sound like this, it actually does feel pretty good, meaning I now had a collectible coin. Next, I decided to make a different type of collectible, a health pickup, so that after you took damage, you could heal yourself. This was a little bit of a different collectible, but essentially it worked the same way, only the variable that it changed wasn't adding one to the coin collector, it was adding one to your current health. However, I also had to set it so that if your current health was already at max, it wouldn't be able to be picked up. That was pretty easy to set up by just making it compare your current health to your max, and if it was already there, then it wouldn't pick up. Now I had a collectible coin and a health pickup, which also had its own sound effect. Next, I drew a coin and a cookie that would serve as the UI for what you were collecting, and positioned them underneath the candy cane. Now I just had to make the number of how many you'd collected actually appear next to them which actually turned out to not be nearly as complicated as I expected. I fiddled with the positioning of everything a bit so that I would have more room for the counter when I started collecting the cookies as well. After that, I made the big cookie collectible, which serves as the main collectible in the game, similar to stars in Super Mario 64, and then I made it so that the number of how many of those you've collected would also show up. Now, I had the basic UI completely finished. At this point, I turned my attention back to controlling Toby and added a double jump, something I had always wanted in the game. Before I did anything else, I did want to try something that one of my subscribers, Lance, recommended, which was making the grass look darker. I gave it a try, and sure enough, it actually did look a lot better, so thank you, Lance. After that, I went back to fiddling with Toby's controls. When I was first making Toby's basic controls, I accidentally set up a float effect to make it look like he was gliding. And I mentioned in that video that I probably shouldn't add that because it was pretty much just feature creep. But at this point in the process, I realized that was something that I thought would be a really fun unlockable control for you to have. So I added it to the game. And suddenly, the FSM for Toby's controls went from this to this. It got a lot more complicated really fast. It also got a lot more complicated when I decided that I wanted the double jump to also be an unlockable control. Essentially, at this point, for the double jump and the glide, I had it checking constantly to see if you could actually do those, which added several more states to this FSM. And at this point, I realized that I had procrastinated as long as I possibly could, and it was finally time to face my fears and actually animate Toby. After spending a full day working on this process, I put them in Unity and set up the first animation, his idle state. He's just vibing. You might also have noticed that I added a candy cane to his design, which was always part of the plans so that he would have something to hit with. 
I set it up so that it looks okay with every animation in the game, but I'm honestly considering just making it invisible and just kind of pop out of thin air when you attack. That way it's not constantly on screen. But for now, I'm just going to leave it and see what you guys think. So make sure to comment your thoughts. Next in the animation tab, I created a blend tree so that it would naturally go from his idle to like a walking state, depending on how fast he was moving. I thought this looked pretty good. Although it did look weird when he jumped. To make things easier on myself, I took the two FSMs that controlled his movement, one that's just called movement and one that was jumping, and I combined them into one FSM. That made things a lot easier for purposes of animation and for controlling him in general. Now I could set up his animation for jumping. It was a smooth transition that went from his idle or his walk to the jump and then back. Next I set up the animation for his double jump, which was kind of a front flip type thing. Uh, it's kind of backwards from what most games do with a flip double jump. And my girlfriend hates it, but I think it's a really quirky, weird thing that kind of fits with the way that this game is supposed to be just odd and unnatural sometimes. What do you think? Comment down below. Now that the jump and double jump were set up, it was time to set up the glide animation, which essentially is just him lowering himself down flat, flattening himself out to get a bunch more air resistance, uh, although admittedly it does kind of look like Peter Pan, and then when he collided with the ground, he would go back to his idle move animation. I had a fun idea to make this more interesting, but it was tied into the next animation that I was going to make, which was my absolute favorite. You press the fall button and he just falls directly flat on his face and he stays there until you let go. And then if you're moving and you hit this button, he still falls on his face, but he maintains a little bit of the velocity of when you first fell. He also can't move in any way other than to get up after you fall on your face. While this was partially set up to be comical, it also had a function that I really wanted to get into the game, which was a kind of duck effect. So what I did was make it so that when you go on your face, the capsule collider actually shrinks down to about the size of where your body is. So very, very small. And with that, you can duck under enemies swinging at you, or you could now slide into previously inaccessible areas. Now that I had this set up, I could do what I finally wanted to do with the glide. First, let me explain that the button that you press when you're standing, Q, that makes you fall on your face, is the same button you press when you're in the air to glide. So when you're gliding, if you just keep that button held down as you hit the ground, you'll actually just go directly into the fall on your face state. And you'll stay there on the ground with your smaller capsule collider until you let go of the button, and then you'll go back to your idle state. Ultimately, I felt like it just gave the player a lot more options in terms of mobility and it made the game feel a lot more fun to just move around. Next, I set up his fun spin attack animation and made it so that you don't take damage when you're attacking. However, currently, even though it looks like Tilly is being hurt by the attack, I don't have anything in place that actually deals damage when you attack. So I'll be dealing with that in the next video. The last thing I did was make sure that he could go into the attack state from almost any other animation. I don't really want the character to ever feel limited on when they can attack. You could attack directly from the glide animation, or I made it so that even if you're falling on your face, you can go directly into the attack from there as well. So now you could slide right under enemies and then pop up and hit them and not take any damage as long as you get out of their range quick enough. This made your movement and your ability to attack feel very versatile, and honestly, I really loved it. And that is pretty much it for this week's devlog. Make sure you let me know in the comments what you think, or if you have any suggestions. Some things I'm looking to do in the next videos are set up a dialog box, make your attack actually deal damage to enemies, and start looking into some post-processing things to make the level look a little bit better in general. Thank you for watching, make sure to like and subscribe, and I still don't have any type of sign-off. So, uh, <laughs> bye I guess. <laughs>